Hey, how's it going guys? Domino Paris 21 here and back to bring you guys another deck profile for you all. So as you see here, what I have to present to you guys is, well, basically my first deck uh, for the G Booster series. And being, of course, that it is, I guess, you know, like the new generation of Vanguard, I thought to go ahead and kick things off with, well, a new clan that is being introduced with this new generation for Vanguard in the form of Gear Chronicle. So, Gear Chronicle, definitely um, getting some nice, good first impressions from the clan. Um, I do still think that they have a lot of room for improvement, which they will be in the next uh, upcoming sets, and being that it's a main character deck, um, there's definitely a lot to uh, to come for this clan. Um, but yeah, I really like the, the feel of the deck, the playstyle of the deck. It kind of gives me that Kagero feel um, in the form of uh, sending regards to the bottom of the deck, which is kind of like retiring, but, you know, kind of like an anti-Legion-esque skill. Uh, of course, since you're not sending units to the drop zone, but really like that control type of feeling this deck provides. And of course, the amount of pressure this deck can bring to your opponent in different forms. Mainly coming from the stride units, of course, because this is, being that it's a sp clan specifically made for the G booster series, it's definitely going to be focused on the stride. So, um, so really like the deck overall, lots of pressure it brings, and really like the control aspect it can aspect it can bring. So yeah, overall just really excited that uh, Dark Zone is getting some attention uh, now, being of course you know in the bottom of everyone's you know attention radar uh, for a while. So really nice to see this. So yeah, without further ado, let's actually get started. All right, so for starters we have our Gunner Gear Draco Kid coming straight out of the trial deck. So his skill is Generation Break 1. You can Counter Blast 1, move him into, into your soul, and you get to search your deck for any Grade 3 Gear Chronicle and add it to your hand. Uh, so really like this card a lot just because one, it makes it just guarantees you to get to your Chrono Jet Dragon if you actually don't open with them and you're forced another to ride another Grade 3. But it's like that tutoring ability to be able to basically fish out any other useful grade threes that may be that may actually benefit you depending on the situation you're in. Uh, granted, Chrono Jet Dragon is kind of like the ideal grade three, um, you know, next to, you know, the Legion I do play in the deck. Um, but definitely going forward with Gears, um, as they get a little bit more ideal bosses or secondary bosses to play Chrono Jet, it helps with the consistency um, to focus on those cards. And also at the same time, it just gives you more options to get into. So definitely a really good solid card. Um, I know there's the other Grade 3 Searcher, you know, just like your Spark Kid and Red Pulse uh, clone. But I just like this card because it's a solid 5k booster. And, you know, like I said, it just is an instant search for you. Goes into Soul, which is obviously good. And uh, even if you don't need to get like the Chrono Jet, you already have Chrono Jet. It's just being able to get a, a guaranteed extra stride target uh, for yourself is always nice. So really good solid card for the deck now moving on to grade threes of course we have your main boss unit of the deck in the form of chrono jet dragon so his skill is generation break two when you have two face-up cards in your g zone he gains plus five thousand and basically the glory skill of when he attacks your opponent when he attacks your opponent's vanguard your opponent cannot guard him with grade one or higher units so you can't perfect guard him granted um you don't you know, granted the Generation Break 2 skill, while it's solid, you really play him for the secondary ability, which is during the turn when you stride over him, you get to Counter Blast 1 and uh, choose one of your opponent's rear guards and send it to the bottom of the deck. I like to call it tucking, like tucking the bottom of the deck. I think it's a lot easier to uh, say than explaining that whole thing. So I'm going to call it tucking in terms of their abilities. Uh, I think there's another term uh, that you can use for it, but I like, call, I like saying tucking. So, with, so yeah, tuck, tuck, tuck. Uh, next up, now next up for the other great threes that to back up Chrono Jet, I do play three the basic Legion. So just when you Legion, uh, when you perform Legion, you get to tuck one of your opponent's rear guards to the bottom of their deck, and you get plus two thousand when you tax Vanguard. So um, so just a decent Legion um, for the deck. I hardly actually perform the Legion sometimes unless I ran out of resources to you know stride and take advantage of Chrono Jet skill. Seeing that this deck is very focused on striding a lot. Um, but nonetheless, it's still nice just to have a Legion, access to a Legion in the deck, just to be able to recycle triggers back in. And his skill actually came in useful for me uh, a few times. Um, then I do have the one Fate Wheel Dragon. He's kind of like the techie card of the deck. I don't really use him too much, but he's definitely he definitely helped out in a few games, which uh, kept made me want to keep him in the deck. Uh, so what he does is Generation Break 1. When he attacks, count, you Counter Blast 1, and he does get the Silent Tom skill of your opponent cannot guard uh, him with grade zeros. They can call grade zeros from their hand to the guardian circle. Um, it, that skill did help me one time and another skill that helped was the secondary skill is when he when you ride him 
on the Vanguard Circle, you get to Counter Blast 1 and Tuck, or excuse me, Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1, and Tuck one of your opponent's rear guards. So it, it helped me actually get rid of my opponent's starter uh, that I didn't like, particularly Judge Bow when I was facing Shadows. Um, so that's one of the main reason why I kept the card in the deck. It sometimes can give you that answer uh, for your opponent uh, to things, maybe if you can't stride right away for some reason, or at the same time, uh, the generation break one skill can come situationally, but like I said, the main focus is really Chrono Jet. But it's nice that you have one of, and your starter can search it out whenever you need it if you feel the need to. Then next for grade twos, you have your four Steam Fighter Amber. Really like this card a lot. Really amazing card for this deck. So what he does is generation break one. When he attacks your opponent's vanguard and it is boosted, count by one, tuck one of your opponent's rearguard. So you know, just combining him with Chrono Jet. I mean, being able to tuck two po your opponent's rear guards that same turn while also pressuring them with some of your very, very powerful uh, stride units, very good combination to work with on uh, during the course of that turn. And really like the Arbic on him too. Looks really cool. But yeah, really amazing card for the deck. Uh, then you have four copies of your Steam Knight Poozer Ili. Sorry, I'm not really good at pronouncing these names, guys. So it's a Silent Tom ability. So when he attacks Vanguard, you get to Soul Blast 2, and he gains the Silent Tom ability of your opponent cannot call grade 0 units to the Guardian Circle. So, being the fact that it is Soul Blast 2, it, it, you kind of are restricted on how often you can really use this card. Um, but I still run 4 just because I am running Legion. So I want to be able to have the ability to Legion and still have enough targets left in the deck to draw into for the later stages of the game. Um, but basically, if you can use your starter skill, ride to grade 3, maybe ride one more grade 3 on top, or maybe put a draw trigger into the soul for its ability, you will be able to at least fire it off twice um, twice in the course of a game. And you, I feel like firing it off once was fine enough because a lot of times I was able to actually close the game out with the other, um, like my main stride units and my other pressure units I do have in the deck. So he's still a very powerful card uh, to go alongside those uh, pressure boss cards essentially. So uh, definitely like him as a 4 of. Then you have your three Twin Master Dragon, just your basic 12k attacker at Generation Break 1. Keep in mind it has to be when it attacks opponent's Vanguard, but just a 12k attacker in the deck, very solid. Uh, so that's it for Great Twos. Then next up, we have your four Steam Maiden, excuse me, Steam Maiden Arloom. I was going to say Armin. Uh, yeah, she is just your unflipper perfect guard for the deck. Um, Honestly, I understand. I know that people like to play regular perfect guards because they're afraid of the cross, uh, especially you know the fact that you can't use this to guard your rear guards. But I never really found that to be a problem because a lot of times, the cross swing my rear guards, I don't mind dropping 25k worth of shield to make it two to pass and reserving the perfect guards for maybe their triggered columns. Because a lot of times too, if you play, if you approach the the cross matchup, um, you know appropriately, um, you will probably you will usually be in the advantage. Um, for the most part, and a lot of times, you know, before my opponent can really take advantage of the cross, I usually end up killing him with, uh, with some with my stride units a lot of times, especially with the testing I've done. So, uh, still still like this card a lot, and this card is very important just for the fact is that you can unflip your counter blast, which is huge for this deck. This deck is very very heavy on counter blast, so definitely like this uh, this sentinel. And then of course you have your four steam breath dragon. This is just your stride enabler of the deck. So if you discard. If you use this card as discard fodder for stride, it actually becomes a grade 3 uh, for that. And when you place it on rear guard, you can reveal a grade 3. Search your deck for a Chrono Jet Dragon, discard 1. So it can help. It's just another way to get you to Chrono Jet if you need to. Because Chrono Jet is really, um, really amazing card. And it's kind of like the heart of the deck in terms of uh, initiating all your plays. So definitely got to run a 4 of because this deck is focused on striding. Then you have your 4, Gear Wolf. Um, Generation Break 1. Whenever you tuck one of your opponent's rear guards, he gains plus three. Honestly, you know, he sounds pretty good on paper, and if you tuck two cards, you can essentially make a 22k column with your Silent Tom clone, but um, honestly, I don't know. I haven't really took advantage of the card fully to really get a lot of value out of it, and of course, there's a new Gear Chronicle promo for April 2015 that uh, will essentially maybe replace some of these, um, but nonetheless, this card did do me some, some pretty good solid uh, work. Uh, for me, uh, situationally, but you know the card is pretty situational in my opinion uh, to really take full advantage of it. But nonetheless, the the for what he can give you to give you that reach you need to maybe make that push for game is always always is always solid. So that's why I run a metaphor of, and then I run four or excuse me two Steam Rider Burnham just your 10k booster. Um, honestly, there isn't really too many grade ones that I really like for the deck. So I just like this because 
I mean, it makes your Ragnarok clock even stronger, but mostly it makes your Chrono Jet better because it will allow for Chrono Jet to hit for 26 with no option for a perfect guard for your opponent. So that's a guaranteed 25k block for two to pass that your opponent has to drop on him. Uh, so eh, it definitely comes in clutch in the late game for you. So a good solid card. And then last but not least, we have our Stride units. So first off, I have them triple C in my Kurumi sleeves, as you see here. Uh, you have two of the promo of, of Lost Age Dragon. So is this your basic... Um, on hit to your opponent's vanguard, you get to tuck one of their rear guards. So it's really nice because I like to switch between these two or Chrono's, Chrono's command. So Chrono's command is uh, when it hits your opponent's vanguard, you counter blast two, soul blast one, and tuck all of their rear guards. So Chrono's command will definitely be the more ideal choice if your opponent has a strong field presence. Like let's say your opponent tries to rush you and tries to establish board presence early on in the game. So Chronos Command can definitely punish your opponents for doing that and pressure them for doing that. Because um, the fact is that Chronos Command actually exists in your stride, in your um, G in your stride deck, and your opponent is usually aware of that, it usually kind of keeps them from wanting to, to you know, kind of go all out a little bit too early in the game. So that's kind of where the pressure in Chronos Command really comes in. But like I said, it really punishes people for doing that. So... Uh, Lost Age Dragon is really good just to be able to clean up on those, you know, very few rear guards your opponent usually will commit to early on because of Chronos Command. But I still like the Chronos Command because it can really bait out a lot of perfect guards because your opponent does not want to see their board get wiped. And once you, you know, once you kind of bait out a few Sentinels here and there, then it opens up your, pretty much your finishing blow in Ragnarok Dragon. Really, really powerful card, and I definitely give a lot of credit to him for closing out a lot of my games. So, what he does is, when he attacks Vanguard, Counter Blast 1, take a copy of uh, Ragnarok Dragon from your uh, G-Zone and put it face up. Or, excuse me, from your, uh, I guess, G-Deck and put it face up. Sorry, I'm not too keen on the terminology, uh, guys. But yeah, put it face up. Uh, so, essentially, Persona Flip. And then, you, you he gains the ability of your opponent cannot call grade zero units to the guardian circle so your opponent cannot guard him with grade zero or grade zeros and he gains an extra crit so pretty much if your opponent does not have a perfect guard they're going to be in a heap of trouble and a lot of times if my opponent doesn't have a perfect guard they usually it, they lose because i can i mean being able to hit for 26 with the silent tom skill extra crit with the booster hitting for an even bigger number it's really it's really tough for your opponent to deal with without the right number of perfect guards in hand uh, through the course of the game and the fact that you can do it twice unconditionally is pretty pretty uh, pretty nasty so uh, definitely really relied upon card in terms of uh, closing out a lot of your game so yeah there you have it guys that is my gear chronicle deck the deck is pretty simple but simple um, right now definitely looking forward to more support for it but none but nonetheless I love Chrono Jet Dragon a lot really fun card to play and a fun deck to play overall other than that guys Thank you. Definitely tell me guys what you think and leave a comment down below. Leave a like to the video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And once again, guys, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Later.